Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding stories. Not exactly bodybuilding updates, this video is more about some drama going on in bodybuilding. So we are starting it with Hari Chopin commenting on his Sinto situation. At this point, if you guys follow my channel or you watch other bodybuilding news outlets, you know that Hari Chopin basically parted ways with his managers and after that they started posting all kinds of different stories, uh, screenshots of the messages, basically trying to prove that Hari Chopin is using Sintol. He did not say anything, at least not in English so far, we didn't hear anything, any comments about this whole situation and finally we got a little comment from him. In the most recent video that he posted, he made two captions, one in English, one in Farsi, but they're not the same, actually. If you actually check the translation, you will see that it's almost the same caption, but it's different in the end. So he says everything is in the hands of the God, you are generous, you are merciful, you are wise, you are the judge, I will never win, the clowns suspended my game. My thanks for Iran, Iran for me, blah, blah, blah. So basically he says he will never win because the clown, and of course he is referring to his former manager, Hadi Parsafar, suspended his game. Hadi Parsafar was blocked from Instagram because he did this. He used Instagram, he used his platform, his profile to completely destroy Hadi Chupan's reputation in bodybuilding. Now, did this really happen? Did he actually destroy his reputation? And is this really gonna be the reason why Hari is not gonna win the Mr. Olympia? I mean, look, it's pretty much known that most bodybuilders are using some site enhancement oil. I think people will forget about what was said about Hari. What might hurt him is people noticing it more now. Actually paying attention to see, is there Sintel, is there oil? People can talk, you know, but what matters more is the judges. Will the judges notice it more now? So if his plan was to stuff his body with Sintel, and if that was the way he was maintaining his, uh, uh, his look overall, then yeah, it's gonna hurt him a little. But if he doesn't plan to blast himself full of oil, then he should be fine, really. Dave Palombo made a reaction video to this whole situation. And in case you guys didn't know, Dave Palombo is actually selling Sintel on his website. I'm not sure if it is exactly Sintel, but he is selling site enhancement oils. I know one is called Painless Pump, and he has said that so many pros are buying it from him. Of course, he's being discreet about it, he won't say the names, but he says in this video that 90% of bodybuilders are using this, are using some kind of site enhancement oil, that it is pretty much normal. So if you guys want to learn more about this topic, you can listen to this video. But basically what he says is you need to be a good artist to use site enhancement oils or Sintol to look good on stage with it. If you are a bad artist, it will show, it will appear when you are on stage and that is not good. And that is when you get marked down. It's not about knowing that you're using it. Most people, most bodybuilders, top pro open bodybuilders are using it. It's about how you use it. If you can see it, then that's not good. You're using it wrong. So for more details, watch the whole video. But that's basically what he says. And he also knows so many pro bodybuilders. I mean, they've been guests at his show so many times. He also coached so many pro bodybuilders, so many great bodybuilders. He was a great bodybuilder himself. He never turned pro, but he was very close to it. He was a monster. He knows what he's talking about. He's been there and done that. He knows people. So when he says almost everybody is using it, we should believe him. Another pretty high-level coach, uh, Phil Wiz, also talked about this uh, Sintel situation. He wrote a rather lengthy text uh, about uh, this whole thing. I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you. If you want, you can pause the video and you can read it. But uh, this part of it I found very interesting. He says, oil doesn't flex, oil doesn't disperse evenly. This means when a muscle is relaxed, you can typically, not always, spot it on muscles that really shorten, like biceps or triceps. And here is a screenshot of Hari from his latest video. And here you can see uh, what his arms, biceps, triceps, and also his shoulders are looking when they are relaxed. And yes, he was relaxed. He was just walking here. So I think this is what Phil Wiz is talking about. He also goes in length and talks about how you can spot Sintol 
But even if you read everything and you memorize it, you still won't be able to really notice it unless you have a trained eye, unless you have seen what it looks like when somebody is using a lot of Sintel, what it looks like when somebody is not, but is just simply big. And uh, to me, at least, it really looks like uh, Hari is using a lot of stuff uh, in his arms, in his delts, and it's showing, it's visible. So I hope somehow he can look good on Mr. Olympia stage, but not really showcase that he is using Sintel. Look at the biceps here. I'm not so much concerned about the shoulders. I mean, yeah, shoulders too, but biceps probably it's the most noticeable thing for me. And you can also see that his forearms are not matching his arms, which means he probably stuffed his arms with oil, but not his forearms. Probably because it's not even possible. You can't really make your forearms big with, with oil, but you can do that with your arms. So, I mean, he did a good job, you know. He got up to be third at the Mr. Olympia a couple of times now, and he's one of the best bodybuilders in the world. If he didn't do that, how good would he look, really? I don't know. Would he look better with the smaller and more shredded arms and shoulders, or would he look worse? I don't know, probably worse, but if you're asking me how much did his former managers hurt his potential placing at a Mr. Olympia, I don't think they could have done that much damage. What do you guys think? Real quickly, I want to introduce to you guys Vintage Base. It is basically a multivitamin by Old School Labs, and also it has a probiotic in it. If you guys are not crazy about buying every single vitamin, every single mineral available, this is a great way, an easy way to get most of them, most of the very important ones, through one serving a day. So guys, if you want to check it out, if you want to support my channel, click on the link in the description of this video and use the code even for a 12% discount. Alright, next story is about Keon Pearson, who looks really good after only two and a half weeks working with Patrick Tour. This is ridiculous. How much progress can one person make in two and a half weeks? What the hell did they do in those two and a half weeks? And how, how Keon looks this much better in such a short amount of time? As you guys know, Keon is preparing for his competition, and the last time I saw his photos, I thought he was a little bit flat, you know, he was a little bit small, smaller than I thought he would be. But in these recent photos, wow, he looks bigger. Now, I'm not saying that Patrick Tour is that great of a coach that he basically transformed him in two and a half weeks. I mean, I like what Patrick Tour is all about as a coach. I watched a couple of podcasts with him, and I learned what is his philosophy. I mean, I, I know basic things that he does with most athletes, and it makes sense, you know? It's different from some others, like Patrick Tour, for example, is a low-protein guy. He increases the carbs as much as possible, but he lowers the protein intake. Unlike, for example, Matt Jensen, who goes high, very high with protein, and, you know, moderate with carbs. There are coaches who go very high in fats, like Dave Palombo, but Patrick Tour, you know, he's a low-protein, high-carb guy. I know bodybuilders who prepared for a show and they were eating so many carbs until the very end of their preps and they looked amazing, so I'm guessing they did something like that with Keon here. I'm guessing they, they flattened him out, you know, he was probably on low carbs for a while because he's chasing the conditioning, and then uh, Patrick Tour fed him with a lot of carbs, and so he blew up, you know, he got filled up, his skin uh, stretched out, he now looks full and round, and also he got a little bit leaner, so when he carved up, he looks he looks good, you know, this is the fact that happens. Also, if you pay attention, you will notice that the right photo is a little bit, I think it's a little bit edited, I think it's sharpened up more than the others, so now he looks fuller, harder, bigger, rounder, and more shredded. I mean, it would be great if he did that, the same thing, if he improved him in that way uh, in the last two and a half weeks before the show. At this point, I mean, there is no reason for him to be super full. You know, when you're trying to get conditioning, you need to be a little bit flat. So I'm guessing after this point, he will probably deplete him again and he will not look as good. This transformation photo here looks like they made some crazy, crazy changes in only two and a half weeks. But really, all this is is great advertising for Patrick Tour. What really happened here is just uh, a combination of a couple of things. First of all, manipulation of macronutrients. I'm sure he's filled up with carbs on the photo on the right. Also, you know, as you're prepping, at some point in prep, at the beginning of the prep, you usually look flat, you know. You're still a little bit chubby, you lose fullness because you deplete of carbs, you, you, you lose the fullness of the muscles and you still look pretty much the same body fat, but at some point, you know, you lose that body fat because you're depleted and when you carb up a little bit, you get this effect, you look fuller and bigger and, and harder. 
Also, the gear that he is using might have just kicked in at this point. Even the fast acting stuff, it is acting fast, yes, but it takes some time to actually see the results from what is happening in your body. So that's it, basically. He does look much more impressive on the photo on the right than he did on the photo on the left in two and a half weeks, but it just means his prep is going really well. He is looking better as the weeks go on, as the way it should be. It's not some kind of magic that Patrick Tour pulled in two and a half weeks. It is just simply his prep going along well. And I'm really excited to see the final package on the stage. All right, next we're going to talk about this newly created beef amongst these two bodybuilders, Blessing of Adibu and Charles Griffin. There is bad blood. So as you guys know, Blessing of Adibu won Indy Pro. He beat Charles Griffin. It was a pretty good battle. Some people had Charles winning over Blessing, but I think Blessing absolutely deserved that win. And I never really realized that there is any beef between these two guys. Uh, later, the next show was New York Pro. Charles was not finished with his season. He still wanted to win a show to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Blessing has already done that, but Blessing decided to do the New York Pro as well. So, Blessing did the New York, he won New York, but Charles did not do New York. I, I thought he was not gonna do it because he was scared of Blessing. For some reason, he didn't think he can beat Blessing. He did get better, he did get harder, and he did win California Pro. He qualified for the Mr. Olympia, but he didn't have a rematch against Blessing. And after all this time, he calls Blessing out. Let me show you. Me. So, as you can see, somebody asked him this question. And uh, the question was basically, who's ready to see the boogeyman place last at the Olympia with all the hype that she is making? Now, of course, Charles Griffin didn't write this himself. Maybe you would think that, but as you can see, he's driving a car, so no, he did not write this. But he did pick this question. You can check out the whole Q&A. There is like, uh, I don't know, 100 responses. So there was so many questions. He did not have to answer this one. By choosing it, basically, he made a statement. Not only that he said that he thinks Blessing is gonna place dead last at the Mr. Olympia, which will not happen, I think Blessing is a better bodybuilder than Charles, I think he will beat Charles, but he also showed us that he doesn't like Blessing. Also, whoever was writing the question, they said she for Blessing. So Charles Griffin is ready to see Blessing place dead last at the Mr. Olympia. Charles Griffin does not like Blessing of Oribu. There is bad blood between these two guys, there is beef, I did not know this until now, but as you can see, there is something happening between these two guys. Me personally, yeah, of course, I like Blessing's physique more. As far as personality, I mean, I like Blessing as a person, the first time, the only time I actually saw him as the person he is was on Fuad Abiyad's podcast. Other than that, on his social media, he's always in the role. He's always pretending, he's always acting. He's showcasing that he is this kind of, uh, I wouldn't even say confident, I would say arrogant, uh, cocky, flashy kind of bodybuilder. I mean, I just watched Thor Love and Thunder last night, and you know, Thor in the movie, he's also very arrogant, confident, but the guy is a god, you know? So he gets to do that and still looks fun. When you are just an average professional top bodybuilder, he will probably be, I don't know if he's gonna crack the top 10, like he's not even the Mr. Olympia winner. When he is so arrogant and, you know, acting so, so cocky, it's not good. It's definitely not a good look. I mean, feel